And now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan, coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Tuesday, November 14th, 2023. And if you'd like additional weather information on top of what I provide in this YouTube video, you can go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's online presence. It'll bring you to a map of the continental U.S. with Hawaii and Alaska to the lower left. And you just point and click anywhere on these maps and it'll pull up a local forecast with any relevant watches, warnings, or advisories. There's all sorts of other information to explore as well. But looking at the map of the continental US this Tuesday afternoon, not too much going on given the time of year. November can be very active, mid-November across the lower 48. We do have an increased threat of fire danger here in the middle Appalachians in the east. We have flood watches uh, along areas of uh, the Florida coastline and back to the west, uh, high wind watch for southeast Wyoming, a winter weather advisory, northwest uh, parts of uh, Montana into Idaho. But otherwise, no really big uh, events going on. Hawaii, much of Hawaii under red flag warnings for enhanced fire danger. And here in Alaska, we've been kind of the weather story of the nation here uh, since the middle of last week. We've had two major winter storms uh, dump a considerable amount of snow, especially on the Anchorage area. In just uh, five days, Anchorage has picked up on the order of two and a half to over four feet of snow within town and up along the eastern uh, hillsides. But the next storm coming in off the bearing is gonna bring coastal flood and high surf advisories to the southwest and west coast. There are warnings for heavy snowfall as that moisture spreads inland uh, tomorrow and Thursday for western and central interior. Good news for South Central, lighter snow amounts are forecast with the system, not as impactful as the last two, and their temperatures may even be briefly warm enough in some areas to have just a little bit of a light mix. But it is going to turn colder across much of the mainland, starting on the west side here Friday in the, as this system works further east and we get a colder flow of air along the west side that'll overspread the mainland for this weekend, bringing some chillier temperatures after what has been a very active stormy pattern. And looking at a couple of the FAA webcams this Tuesday early afternoon, uh, Togiak is showing cloudy skies. A coastal flood advisory is in effect there as winds are going to pick up out of the southeast tonight ahead of a front and then shift to the southwest Wednesday afternoon and evening. And there is a potential for some minor coastal flooding as water levels could run as much as uh, three to five feet above normal. Temperature there, though, above freezing. Temperatures are actually going to rise a few more degrees. Uh, and uh, Anvik, further inland there up the Yukon River, winter storm warning. A temperature of 25 degrees early this Tuesday afternoon, but as that moisture spreads inland through the southwest and west central interior, it's going to encounter some colder air, fall mainly as heavy snow, and that will spread further eastward through the central interior as we go into Wednesday night and Thursday. So here are some of the current uh, advisories warnings that are in effect. We have a high wind warning for the central Aleutians at Adak and Atka. Winds could gust as high as 80 miles an hour as a strong low passes north of the Aleutians here tonight. Uh, winds are going to shift west, southwest to west and, and become quite strong. And then a frontal system out ahead of that low is going to push up here into the southwest coast. It will have a band of precipitation along it, mainly just a cold uh, coastal rain with uh, strong winds. But as that moisture pushes inland, it's going to be in the form of snow, and the snow could be heavy. But as I mentioned, Kuskokwim and Bristol Bays are in line for some higher uh, wave action and water levels as a result of southeast winds veering to the southwest and gusting at times up near 40 miles an hour, especially there along the coast. Now, as we go up the lower Yukon Delta along Norton Sound, the Seward Peninsula, and then uh, Kotzebue Sound all the way up past Point Hope and just east of Utgadik, we have high surf advisories in effect. Water levels there could run as high as two to four feet above uh, normal high tide. And we have a, a high um, wind warning for areas of the western Seward Peninsula and uh, St. Lawrence Island, where winds could gust as high as 60 miles an hour. We also have a wind advisory here, the central eastern Alaska range, including uh, Denali Park on over toward uh, Isabel Pass. Winds could gust as high as 50, 60 miles an hour along some of the passes and ridge lines. But the area in red here across the uh, southwest, west central interior, these are winter storm warnings. Six to 12 inches of snow will fall 
uh, later Wednesday through Thursday. Some areas into early Friday as you get further inland into the central interior. And some areas where you have kind of a, when a south wind comes on up into the area, you get enhancement from the terrain. So battles toward Ambler. Some spots there could see locally over a foot of snowfall by the time things wind down. Uh, Thursday night into early Friday. And looking at uh, the satellite imagery, we have one system pushing on in through the panhandle. That was the same low the other day that was out over the northern gulf. And uh, it does have some scattered showers with it. Back to the west, so you'll see the curl in the clouds. That is the storm center that's working its way across the central bearing. We have a front that arcs out ahead of it. And that frontal system will be pushing up into the southwest coast as we go into Wednesday. That'll bring windy conditions along with additional precipitation. And as I mentioned, high winds here, especially across the central Aleutians, as that low center passes north of there tonight. Uh, low is currently located there, just north northeast of Shimia. And with the frontal system extending out ahead of it, Briefly warmer temperatures this afternoon in the 50s there through Dutch Harbor on up into the False Pass, Cold Bay. There's a little wedge of warmer air that's going to get pinched off as we go into tomorrow. And then here's that low that's sitting just along uh, the northern portion of the outer Panhandle coast. But by late tonight, early on Wednesday morning, we're going to have uh, low pressure, the main low still out toward the central bearing, but the occluded front pushing inland with kind of a weak triple point low there just off the Yukon Delta. A secondary low at the triple point will form here near Kodiak Island uh, early on Wednesday morning. And, and by Wednesday afternoon, we have two main lows. The main low coming in here along the Yukon Delta into the southwest interior up through the lower and middle Yukon Valley. It'll take that track. And then the secondary low will sit out here in the western Gulf, working its way eastward, forcing this frontal system into the panhandle. That'll bring some more coastal rains, gusty winds, inner mountain snows as we go into Wednesday night and Thursday. And we have this secondary cold front that's going to pull down, begin to pull down colder air out of eastern Russia, the Chuck GC on the backside of this low, so that on Thursday, the main low moves up into the middle Yukon River Valley. We have the secondary front pushing southeast of the Alaska Peninsula. We have the one low just sitting off here of the uh, northern half of the uh, panhandle, but then another low is going to come up and lift northward here, and that's what's going to help pull this colder air in across much of the rest of the mainland as we go into the weekend, Friday into Saturday. So look for colder temperatures, especially uh, those of you in and around uh, the Matsu Valley, Anchorage area. If you haven't cleared up your walkways, decks, maybe some people are even thinking about tackling the roof, be careful there. This colder air coming in is going to freeze everything up like cement. So better to just get at that and take care of that here within the next couple of days before the colder air arrives for the weekend. And looking here along areas of the southwest uh, uh, panhandle, lows will stay above freezing, a little below freezing. Juno on up towards Skagway and Haines, uh, three above Copper River Basin at Glen Allen and uh, down to around 20 at uh, Anchorage. But uh, temperatures Wednesday afternoon, uh, should rebound into the 40s along the outer uh, southern and western uh, areas of the panhandle and uh, a little above freezing uh, as we get down through the anchorage bowl but a little below freezing there up toward talkeetna 45 though at kodiak city and temperatures will creep upward a little bit thursday night not be quite as cold uh, even up around 40 at sitka and uh, klawak and then for thursday afternoon we expect some temperatures could approach 50 here along the outer southwestern panhandle uh, back inland we could get uh, some temperatures approaching freezing mark, say up as far north as maybe Anchorage. And then temperatures in the far north, we are looking for still some readings a bit below, uh, z above or below zero. Anatovic Pass on over toward Arctic Village and also around Northway. Uh, temperatures, though, are going to slowly be creeping upward uh, here through uh, areas of the lower Yukon and Kuskokwim basins as a result of that front pushing in. We should get temperatures around or just above freezing Wednesday afternoon. And then for Thursday morning, lows, that may be a little cool, but otherwise we're expecting that air mass to modify a bit, cool down, but still as areas of moderate to locally heavy snow push their way further inland into the central interior, temperatures should generally be in the 20s for highs here. Some colder air is going to begin to spill southward then out of eastern Russia on the east uh, side of the uh, Bering Sea along the west coast. And for Wednesday morning, 
Lows will generally be in the 40s, even some near 50 degree readings, eastern Aleutians up into the southern half of the Alaska Peninsula. And for Wednesday afternoon, as that front pushes inland, we could see some temperatures around 40 uh, at Kuskokwim and uh, Bristol Bays, and still a, a reading or two in the lower 50s along the Alaska Peninsula, not out of the question before that warmer air gets pinched off. And then temperatures should be cooler uh, along the southwest interior on Thursday morning, and we're gonna start to see in the backside of this low, uh, the colder air beginning to drop down, and that'll eventually arrive as we get through uh, Friday. But in the meantime, Thursday afternoon, notice cooler temperatures beginning to shift back down into the 20s across the southwest interior, and only maybe lower 40s still along the Aleutians into uh, the Alaska Peninsula with a little colder readings likely. And with that cold air coming in on a brisk, uh, northerly, northwesterly flow, there, there could be some enhanced snow showers and snow squalls. So looking ahead, we're going to get some colder air into the mainland for this coming weekend. But by the time we come out of that, leading up to the days leading up to Thanksgiving, it's looking like temperatures will average near normal across much of south central to southeast interior, a bit below normal across the panhandle, but above normal, especially in the northwest part of the state along uh, the north slope and Arctic coast. And precipitation, at this time too, we're not seeing any big, big storms here for the holidays. So uh, leading up to that time frame, maybe a little above normal precipitation in through the panhandle areas surrounding Cook Inlet, the Kenai Peninsula down along the Alaska Peninsula. But then further north, precipitation may average a bit below normal, especially between Fairbanks and Arctic Village centered on the upper Yukon Basin.